It was 1997, the first year I started it. I think in 95 I had an email address, and in 97 I started to learn code. So I did this intensive three-week course on HTML, and at that point there was no curriculum. Uh, the tutors were basically artists. There was no um, proper rules. There was nothing at that stage. It was just like, what, what are we doing? We just want to make art on the internet. I remember looking out at a lot of these, the really early sites, and we were looking at, especially at anti-ROM and um, Tomato Interactive at that time, and we were big fans of, of Tom Roop. And we knew that he was actually coming over to speak at a conference. And one of the designers I worked with said, oh, I'm going to email Tom and see if he wants to come in and hang out. And I just like laughed at him, and I was like, Tom Roop's not going to come in and talk to us. He's just going to, that's a joke. And then he came back to me and said, oh, he replied to email. He's going to come up when he's over here. And and this is like, we were, you know, so excited, like, you know, like little kids. So while Tom was was up there, he, he sort of put us on the spot. And he was like, what kind of, you know, experimental stuff are you guys doing outside of the commercial work and your client work? And none of us would, we were doing a couple of things, like sort of VJing things like live video and mixing stuff like that. That was basically, we weren't really involved in the, in the sort of code side so much. And he kind of just looked at us and said, well, you know, you guys are going to burn out real quick if you don't, if you don't experiment, if you don't keep doing those, those, those projects outside of your work, you're just going to lose that, you're going to lose that love for this medium. And that still sticks with me this day. And, um, you know, a lot of us are still really essentially artists who wanted to experiment and then we go into this commercial world and, you know, we have the trials and tribulations of real work and real clients and then we go home and stay up till two in the morning and work on our own stuff. And I think some of us are still finding that balance and medium of being happy at work and happy, um, you know, doing our own sort of personal projects and artworks and keeping that stuff alive. And so that's how, you know, that's will always stick with me. I don't think I'll ever lose that. The Adventures of Miss AP was based around three narratives um, in LA, London and uh, Paris. And it was around this, this central figure who was the, the seductive vixen Miss AP and her two younger, naughtier protégés. Um, we, we wanted to create the story around them so we so we basically had a rough script. We had, we had a shot list from the photographer. Yeah, we went to the shoots and we had an idea what we'd create around some filmed vignettes. And that's what we would build our interactive stories from. But we didn't know where the beginning or the end was or how we would start it, whether it was going to be an illustration or a video. The process was just, it was great to work. I was working with um, Kala, who was the, helping me develop all the flash part of it in the interactivity and I would I would sort of work from you know semi normal hours to around you know 11:30 at night and I would send him a bunch of photoshop files and a couple of notes and an email saying I kind of want this to happen I don't really know how it's going to work but it would be cool if this would happen and I didn't even know if Kala was there to answer me and I would sort of come back the next day at around 9 or 10 in the morning and all I'd have is this email in my inbox with like maybe like eight or nine swift flash files just sitting there with no explanation and I was like has he done what I've asked him to do how is this going to work so I'd open all these different files and just look at how he had experimented and thrown stuff in there added things that I hadn't thought of and that was kind of the collaborative process he wasn't really on the phone he wasn't really even on you know a messenger system and he was certainly not coming into the studio to work with us. <laughs> he was just notorious for working the complete opposite hours to what everybody else was doing. But the process worked, and it, and it worked in the same way that when we worked with um, the music composer, we sometimes we had all the scenes designed and ready to go and animated, and he would come in and just take it away and, and add some of the strangest sound, music or audio or his his relation his artistic relationship to what he was looking at was was so varied but it, it worked and then sometimes he would come in and give us 20 sound bites or s these strange um, 
compositions and say, can you work with this? Can you make this work in your scenes? So the process was, it wasn't like we had a storyboard and we sat down and said, this is how we want it to come to life. This is our 30 second commercial. It, the storytelling was not like that. It was, it was just, here's creative people with great ideas and, and we can merge these together. We can make it work and it, and it really did.